Throw a slack line cast here and back off the power a little bit. Boom, right there, back it off. That does is it gives me a little slack. I can manage my line real quickly and I do not have instant drag when it lands like you would with a straight line cast. That's a nice option right there. Pete, I noticed in these presentation casts, you're not doing any mending on the water. You're just lifting the, the rod and kind of repositioning the line. The only mend I might do is if a current grabs the, grabs the line and, and does something unexpected, but nope, I'm gonna aerialize most of the mends here because I just can't afford to spook the fish with a water mend. And it's really important that you aerialize your mends. It's hard from sitting down low, and that's just a challenge that you have. It makes it fun. But it's really important that you aerialize the mends. Pete's using a three-weight rod. A three and four-weight rods are almost essential for this. And there's something that's important about using this rod, and is that you have to use a little bit longer stroke to get more energy on your backstroke. It's still a short stroke, and we're still not going back too far. But we're go, what we're doing is we're taking that cast up. Because it's not as stiff a rod as some of our other uh, rods that we have, like a six or seven weight rod, five, six or seven weight rod, what happens as you go back in your cast, you add a little bit more energy right there. Rather than coming to a stop to transfer the energy, we add just a little bit. You'll see it when he does that cast. He'll come back and add a little bit, almost a little actual flick of the wrist so that, that that softer rod, and it'll open up, even though he's right here, you'll see him, it's not bending a wrist. Now that's something that really confuses people, but he's actually tilting his arm back so that the line flattens out. One of the characteristics of these light lines is their tapering. If you're only gonna cast like 15 to 20 feet in a really, really small stream, a double tapered's fine, but a traditional weight forward and this small line is not going to do it for you. Almost all the line manufacturers have Spring Creek type lines. They're little mini uh, weight forward or little mini heads as we call it, designed to just aerialize a little line and shoot it. Everybody's making it. The one that I uh, have worked with is the, the Cortland Clear Creek line, which is again designed. It was the first line designed for Spring Creek fishing. Now everybody's got it. Another cool piece of presentation information is called a drag man or what I call a drag man. You lay that fly down just slightly past the feeding lane of the fish and as soon as it lands you drag it into place so that it goes right over the top of the fish. You're doing this above the fish so he doesn't get spooked and doesn't see it and then you're all set. You got to be really gentle when you drag it or else you'll sink the fly. But it's a great option. There's something else that Pete will be doing here and it sometimes confuses people, and that is what we call side cast. And they say, you'll hear people say, don't side arm. There's a difference. Swinging the rod like this without locking your wrist is side arming. But to make a cast where you lock the wrist and change the casting plane. I'm up here, I'm gonna start tilting myself, and as long as all the integrity of the cast remains on the same axis here, and I bring the rod back, I can make casts that'll go underneath bushes that can stay out of the fish's vision. Now Pete's gonna demonstrate that. The important part of a side cast is to make sure that you tilt that plane, the same plane that you're doing with the overhand, overhead cast, tilt it over to the side. Let me give you a shot. I'm gonna bring it over gradually. There I am over the top. I'm coming down. Notice I'm not using a lot of wrist. and I'm trying to stay in the same plane until I get to the side. A little bit of, little bit of wind here, but you can still do it. In fact, the wind's not gonna hurt us here. When you notice Pete's cast, I want you to watch the rod tip. How as the plane changes, his rod tip stays in the same position. A lot of anglers will dip the wrist too far back and they end up catching all the weeds that are only like six inches off the ground. It's because they want to dip, when they go to the side, they want to dip the rod tip too far back. Look at Pete's, it's in the same plane, line is still staying up, and he makes his cast. Pete just has a fish that's now a little bit out of the casting range. He's gonna stretch his cast, and this comes into the most important part of getting better at fly casting, and that's shooting the line. He's a pretty short dude there right now. He's about four foot high. 
So what's going to help him is a little bit of what we call the halls. We've talked about this already. The double halls, the single halls, we call them the jerks and the pull. As you can see right now, even with a little three weight, it can be very effective pulling down on the line, increasing the line speed, and making it happen. Pete just put out a 50-foot cast with a three weight because he knew how to do the hauls. Let's take a look at You see, I'm just casting the leader, and I mm -hmm. can do that. So you should be able to cast the... <laughs> look at that wow. fish come by. Just You know, I've caught fish just casting the leader. You know, you can do that. So you don't have to worry about spooking a fish cat, just the leader. Okay. Now, with these light lines doing this, you're going to end up having to do more false casting because you've got to get the line out. You've got to get a little bit of the weight of the line out. Now, look what I'm doing here. I'm going to increase the length of my rod. I'm going to go back, let it go. It's going to be a lot of wind resistance. Right. So I've got to let that rod go back and let, make sure that the line straightens out. And that's probably the hardest thing for people to understand. If you start rushing this, you're going to tangle up. Now, I've got two flies on with an 18-foot leader. I lock that cast. I go back, making sure I'll even follow it back a little bit by adding that line into the tip. Okay, and right now, there we go. We've just thrown a, you know, a really nice cast with an 18-foot leader. Nicely done. There are places which you're going to use a long leader. If you're going to get a chance to do some uh, uh, fishing in Canada where they don't allow you to put on uh, lead weights mm -hmm. or strike indicators and you need to get down deep, this will get you down deep. And spooky fish, nothing better than a long leader, as long as you can handle it. Again, on your forward cast, a little bit lower in the cast will do it. As we can see, I think I had a fish take that. But I can't tell. That's so f I cast it so far away, I can't see it. <laughs> All right, Pete, I think these folks need to do, know a little bit about, because that's going to help you. Even with these longer casts, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to pull down and shoot that line. Look, at, look how that helped me. Yep, nice haul. Nice so, tug down. I know you have a nice way of teaching it. I think let's go show the folks how to do it.